Hey Art Nerds, I am doing another uh, character challenge today. Today's prompts was Steampunk Made. So I went ahead and I googled Steampunk so I'd have some fresh oh, reference and I went ahead and go made. So googled Made so I'd have some fresh fresh reference. So the first thing I'm doing is I've kind of got an idea in my head but I want to kind of flesh out a pose that's going to give me more of an opportunity to flesh out my ideas. Now I'm not really going for anything complicated today because to be honest I don't really have any strong ties to steampunk or to maids in general so it's not a particularly inspiring prompt for me today so I really just wanted to focus on generating a character. You guys can see that I struggled a little bit with finding the right pose with placing the legs properly even though I did do a figure drawing warm-up today and that still happens from time to time but you see I did eventually figure out how I wanted the legs to look then it takes me a bit of a moment because I want to decide on what the character is wearing that's going to kind of help me decide where I'm going to place the arms. So I opted to do kind of a combination of what most commonly pops up when you look for steampunk and you're looking for women's clothing, which is the sort of shorter length dresses, the high-low dresses that have like an apron or an overskirt. And I'm not actually a big fan of that style because I am interested in Victoriana and it's just completely antithetical to Victoriana. But, you know, I can see how if you had to wear a skirt, having a shorter skirt while doing housework would be easier than having a longer skirt. Although it wouldn't protect your knees when you're down on the floor scrubbing the floors. So I went ahead and I sketched in the line where I want her boots to hit slightly below the knee. I was thinking of something perhaps a little bit more utilitarian and then of course I have to put her in a corset which is not at all utilitarian. Perhaps I should have thought this prompt out a little more thoroughly. And one of the ways I could have done that is I could have sat and I could have made a list of the attributes that both words inspire and then worked from there. And that is really a course of action that I would take if I were planning a comic or if I were planning a comic pitch. Um, and perhaps it is a course of action that can be useful for demonstrating in the future. So I went ahead and I sketched in her arms. I decided to have one of her hands on her hips and the other hand holding a feather duster. Since she is a maid, I thought it would be helpful to give her a prompt. And then I go ahead and I start sketching in her face using the crosshairs so that I know where her eyes, where her features will be. Then I use cylinders to flesh out her arms a bit more. Now I'm not I have reference available, but I'm not drawing this from specifically one reference. I'm combining several elements from several different things to kind of make a new character. And this is why drawing from reference can be so useful, is you are not necessarily having to generate a lot of, you're not using that kind of processing power on just one thing. You've kind of offloaded that processing power, if that makes sense. I'm sure to some of you it'll make sense, and to some of you it'll make no sense at all. I did want to bring in several elements of like the stereotypical ooh -la -la French maid kind of costume, the Halloween-y kind of costume with the little white puff sleeves, the black and white aspects, and also the apron. You guys can see I've kind of sketched it in here. But in keeping with what is popular for steampunk options on the internet, I gave her one of those ruched aprons where it's being held up by garters. I've also decided to give her boot covers. It would make some sense since she would probably be getting pretty dirty. Although, to be honest, boots would not be an option of choice, probably, for a housemaid. It would probably be slippers to help protect the floors. So I'm drawing in the garters that are holding up her apron, and then I'm sketching in the lace. That is one of the elements that I wanted to keep. When you're doing these sort of mishmash character designs, and you're not particularly tied to the topic, it helps to think about what makes those characters distinctive, what elements stand out to the viewer. Think in visual shorthand. How can you convey that this is a steampunk made with as little information as possible, and then go from there? Of course, if I'd wanted to make her more steampunky, perhaps having a clockwork or a steam contraption in the back, maybe a washing machine or a dishwasher, would have been helpful. But I'm trying to keep these character design um, prompts something I do daily um, as a way to keep me inspired when I'm painting Kara pages. So sometimes if I'm not feeling the prompt, I'm just going to stick to the character rather than doing any world building exercises. 
I also decide to give her a little ruffled maid headdress. I have a feeling those are sort of a reference to mob caps, but mob caps aren't really in keeping with steampunk since um, it's pretty typical to see women's hair in steampunk. So I just kind of split the difference and decided to give her a loose bun while also giving her the ruffled cap. And now I'm just sort of fleshing in, sketching in her hair and her I face. I imagine her hair would have fallen down slightly from her bun if she's doing housework. And unfortunately, I apologize, my hand is covering this view. Need to make a finger cam or something like that. And now I'm just adding some shading to kind of help uh, separate the forms and also help indicate that this is a maid's costume. Stereotypically, we think of maid's costumes as being black and white with, you know, black being the predominant color and white being the accents, white being the apron, the lace, the sleeves, that sort of thing. So I am going to... Nope, not yet. I'm tightening up the forms, and I guess I'm going to go ahead and draw in the feather duster. Now, there's three terms I've referenced. I've referenced maid, steampunk, and feather duster. And that way, I could accurately pull elements from all three. I do think if I were doing um, a Victoriana or a steampunk story and I were writing about a maid, this is not the sort of outfit I would put the maid in. I would definitely go for something much more utilitarian. This is definitely more flirty than I would dress a maid so, character like in. Anyone who creates content for others' enjoyment and not edification necessarily. Of course, that probably makes it very difficult to do work. So that's something you want to consider when you're doing character designs is how do they function in the world they inhabit? How does the clothing they wear function in the world they inhabit? And this, yeah, I guess she would just be more of a show maid than a working maid. You can do amazing things. All right, so that is it. Thank you guys so much for joining me for yet another character design prompt. Today we did steampunk and maid. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments.